Hello and welcome back to the Microholder channel. Today is the big day of the Hackintosh rebuild. These are my normal tools including a screwdriver extender to get into all those difficult places. Here's my little jar of PC bits and bobs, the Apple parts that we took out of the breakdown and some motherboard spaces. An MSI motherboard compatible with the Mac operating system and a Celeron processor. Plus I'll install 16 gigabyte of RAM. I'm also using a trusted Sapphire Nitro graphics card because I like all the extra outputs so I can have lots of monitors. Reinstalling the power supply is a piece of cake. Just slide it in the way we took it out so it locks into place and then push it back so that the power input slips into the hole on the back. Then reinstall the shelf on top, doing up both the screws nice and tight, flip it over and do the four screws on the bottom and that fixes the power supply in place. Now I reinstall the top hard drive tray, making sure the cables are nice and tucked away at the back. There's four screws now at the top because we covered one up, plus two at the bottom on the back plate. Reinstall the fan housing with the two screws, one on each side. Then reinstall the top shelf the way we took it out. Slide it in, put it in position, and then it slips to the right over the little notches on the bottom. The locking arm clips back into place and slides left and right. Once that's in, tighten up all the bolts. Once again, you can do these up fairly tightly. And then tighten these four bolts up on the bottom. You can use a hex screwdriver for this, but I'm cheating by using my pliers. These catches go back in the way we removed them. And remember, the little spring clip that fits underneath, just reinstall that by pushing it up and sliding it in. Make sure the springy side is down. And then install the other two. And then we move on to this door opening catch. Don't forget to install these two washers, the plastic ones we removed before. And then slide the bolt up from underneath. Remembering to install the top washer and then the circlip just fits over with a little bit of pressure from something flat. I'm using an old hex head and it pops into place. Now we install the media tray, plug in the SATA cable, slide the tray into place so the bottom screws go into the four notches. And then we use these two clips, slide them to the right, and they lock it into place. I attach the power cable at the back, and then we're ready to go. The memory stick has a little notch, but it's not in the center. It's, it's shorter at one end. Make sure you line it up with the memory stick tray so that the notch on the memory stick tray corresponds to the notch in the memory stick. Push it down firmly, and it should clip into place. Same with the other one, make sure the notch is in the right position. Slide it into place and push it down firmly. Now for the motherboard's I.O. sockets. I won't be using the keyboard and mouse ports here because I'm going to use a wireless keyboard and mouse. I won't need these monitor outputs because I've got a graphics card. Don't need this HDMI output or these old USB outputs. I'm using USB 3, so I want to access these, and I want to access the communications port here. And I won't need the audio in and out because I'm using a sound card as well. Now, I need to be able to get these cables to these ports. So I'm going to have to cut a little hole out here, only a small one. So I'm marking up with a marker pen so I get a nice clean cut. Now you can see the hole I've cut for the USB and communication cable. Here are the old Apple Mac motherboard spacers. I'm attaching them to the motherboard so I can position the spaces in the right place for gluing. I'm mixing up some two-part epoxy. Try not to get it on the motherboard like I did. I just need a little dab on each one so they fix into place and then when I remove the motherboard I can add more epoxy.
I fixed the motherboard in place by attaching the graphics card and screwing it into the graphics card output slot. I leave it for about an hour or two so the epoxy dries hard. Then unscrew all the screws on the motherboard and remove it gently. The motherboard spaces are now fixed so I add a load more epoxy just to secure them even more. And now the fun part begins, reinstalling the motherboard. Attach all the screws to the motherboard spacers. Attach all the SATA cables, starting with the main drive for the operating system into slot 1, the backup drive into slot 2, and the media drive into slot 3, or 4, depending on how many other things you intend to attach. I'm only going to use these three items, so that's going to go into slot 3. The main motherboard cable, make sure the catch is on the outside so it clicks into place nice and firmly. The motherboard power cable goes at the back here. Again, make sure the catch is on the right side, facing outwards, so it clicks into place. Reinstalling the graphics card. Push it in the back first and then clip it into place. You should hear an audible click. Now the rear fan filter just clicks into place and then we have to attach all those tiny little screws we removed before. To get the middle shelf in the right position, I'm using the inner door to help line it up. And then we're going to attach the bracket at the bottom so that the middle shelf has plenty of support. I'm drilling a hole first to attach the bracket to and add a nut and bolt. Once again I'm mixing up some two part epoxy glue, give it a thorough mix to make sure the hardener and the glue are mixed together, then door bottle over the bracket. Fix it to the shelf with the nut and bolt and let it dry for about an hour. I'm using my jar to weight it down. The same again for this bracket at the back, plenty of epoxy. Now it's nice and solid, I can undo the shelf and this bracket at the back. Then add more epoxy onto the brackets to make them even more secure. I bought these fan extension units from eBay. They'll help me distribute power to the fans at the top. And another one here to power the fans at the front and at the rear on the lower level. I'll put a link for these in the description. This is a special cable I bought, so I could use the power switch on the front and the USB port. Also the audio I now. I really wanted to be able to use the power button on the front and also to be able to plug in some USB drives or whatever else. The rear fan just installs by sliding in and aligning the two notches top and bottom. It also makes the top shelf more secure. I had a bit of a problem here. The rear fan cables weren't long enough to reach the fan extender. Again this cover just slots into place and slides to the right to secure it. The inner door just slots into the three notches at the bottom and pushes in. Then slot in the outer door, click it shut at the top and close the catch at the back. I got a bit of a surprise when I powered up the system. Those fans that weren't LED fans turned out to be LED fans after all. They look pretty cool. I installed windows. I won't go through the process of that because it's incredibly boring. But here we go. Let's see if it works. So windows booted up fine. You could install a Mac system or even dual systems on this hard drive. I only installed windows because all my software is windows based. So that was a great build. I'm really happy with the outcome. For my next project, I'm going to do something very unusual. I'm going to try and grow plants in Martian soil. I purchased this simulant from a company that supplies NASA, who also did a similar experiment. Come back soon and see how I get on. Please hit the like button and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.